These days, the places kids go to play sports have gotten so big that you can only appreciate their size from high above. Sprawling complexes with professional grade fields where teams can play all day and all night. And since there is no off season anymore in big time youth sports, there are massive indoor facilities too. If you're a kid, heck if you're an adult and you walk in here, you think you've died and gone to sports heaven. This is fantasy land for athletes. Dev Patik is an owner of Bo Jackson's Elite Sports in Ohio and is a consultant to facilities like this throughout the U.S. You got soccer over here, you got a weightlifting facility here, regulation infield over here for baseball being used, batting cages over there, and we're standing on this tall gauntlet which has climbing walls and climbing ropes and everything else. What don't you have in here? It, the facility is amazing, isn't it? These kids come in here, they get mental toughness training on this tower, they get skills training out in the infield, they're in the cages, they have qualified, well-trained coaches. These kids are headed somewhere. The Bow Dome, as it's known here in Hilliard, Ohio, is part of a booming business. According to one estimate, spending on youth sports this year will top $17 billion, with some families spending $10,000 a year per kid or more. Some of these kids might spend $150, even $175 an hour to be with a collegiate level coach. They're spending $175 an hour. If they want to be prepared for college, many of these consumers believe they need it. And that's the sales pitch to parents? The interesting thing about a facility like this is there's no sales pitch necessary. Parents with means are clamoring to put their kids in the very best sports programs. There is no sales pitch. This is GB, here we go. But there is a problem. The price of playing sports has gotten so high that millions of kids can't keep up. Researchers say that over the last decade, there has been an 8% drop in the number of American children who play competitive sports. 8% in just a decade. For the first time in American history, youth sports has become for the haves and out of reach for the have-nots. What you just watched is the harsh reality of youth club sports in today's world. Many children don't have the ability to play due to a number of reasons, including expensive fees, high equipment prices, location, and more. This is why I'm here to explain the difficulties of participating in youth club sports, why they're so difficult to access, and the benefits and importance of participation. So what makes it so difficult? The most difficult part, as we already stated, are the fees to play. Club sports are expensive. Not only do you have to pay the annual fees to play, but that doesn't take into account the extra money paid for uniforms, equipment, and travel expenses. In a survey of 52 participants, 51 said that their parents had to pay for them to play, 47 had to pay for additional equipment and materials, and 37 had to pay separately for uniforms. However, six participants also shared that their parents had difficulty paying for club fees, and five reporting that they had difficulties paying extra for uniforms and or equipment. It's also good to take into account that 30 participants think there is an issue with the accessibility of youth club sports. So, money plays a large factor. Now, I play club soccer, and research shows that depending on the state and club you play for, membership fees for one year per person can range from $2,000 to $5,000 not including any extra equipment and travel fees. So, those who struggle financially may never have the option to participate. Another difficulty is the transportation aspect. Practices every night after school, games on the weekend, traveling on the weekends and for large tournaments. It's very time consuming to get from one place to another, especially taking into account the jobs and availability of the parents, how far you travel for practices and games, and other life events. Another difficulty is skill level. If you start a sport too late, you may not be accepted onto the top teams, and in many cases, parents have to pay extra for private lessons and extra practice if they really want to make that high-level team. This adds to the already expensive costs unless you start playing at a young age. However, there are difficulties with playing at a young age as well, including the overuse and increased risk of injury. It's been found that sports specialization at a young age leads to the use of specific muscles for a long time, which can lead to injury and, you guessed it, paying more money. What would you say is the hardest part about your kids playing club sports? Um, the hardest part w would be, um, first of all, it's financially taxing. Um, you have to pay club, club fees, um, there's uniforms every year, training equipment, and then travel on top of it um, all over the country pretty much year round um, can be pretty draining. Um, it's also very time consuming. Um, when you play a club sport, they expect you to travel, or I'm sorry, practice three to four times a week. 
Um, so you have to drive them there and back. Um, we do have people that I know that drive over an hour one way, four times a week, um, and then travel on the weekend. Um, the other thing um, I think it's hard for the child is even though they're doing something they, they really love and it, their goal is to succeed at that sport at a high level, um, they miss out on a lot of things in their youth. So would you say it's a big financial commitment to have your kids participate in youth club sports? Yes, absolutely. So what's a solution to help ease this financial burden? One could be the creation of FAPs, specifically for club sports participation. So what are FAPs? FAP stands for Fee Application Program, and they exist in today's world to help those who need assistance in paying for housing, paying for school, specifically those in medical school, or those who need assistance in general. The idea is that there could be a system like this, but families could apply for financial aid to get the ability for their kids to participate in club sports. Through this, they would receive assistance to help pay for the annual fees, the equipment or uniforms, and the fees if their child gets injured. These programs can additionally help with the transportation aspect by providing transportation services to and from practices and games, saving the parents time and money. With this financial aid, parents would also be able to start having their kids play at a younger age, which could result in an advancement of skills at a young age and a greater chance of making certain teams win that later. In the survey I conducted, 50 of 52 people think that funding those in need of financial help would be a good idea. These FAPs would also be able to provide some equipment if they were to get donations from the public. When asked in my survey, 49 of 52 people said that they would donate their old or unused sports equipment so people seem to be on board. Another solution to help pay for expenses could be fundraising. You can ask local businesses to sponsor your team and or make donations, hold sales such as bake sales or merchandise sales, or hold raffles and give away prizes. A great example are these shirts that my team made last year. We went around and asked businesses if they wanted to be sponsored on our shirts for a certain price. We wore these shirts during warm-ups, wore them while traveling, and made posts about them on social media to promote these businesses. We were then able to use the profit to pay for certain expenses. When an asked in the survey, 41 of 52 people thought that fundraising is a reasonable way to help pay for traveling and other expenses. So what else makes accessing youth club sports difficult? Coaching difficulties seem to be a problem as well. Coaching is a time-consuming process with having to create practice and game plans, making sure the kids are learning and having fun, working with parents, being accountable, having constant communication with players and parents, and a great deal of patience. What are some difficulties you have with coaching? I think coaching at times can be a challenge as obviously it's super demanding for our players. So they're there for, you know, three, four days a week for, you know, seven, eight years in a really high intensity environment. So I think one of the biggest challenges is actually keeping everyone motivated, right? When things are tough, um, you know, especially towards the end of senior year, when kids are learning to balance, you've got all sorts of school stuff, you've got social stuff, you've got graduation stuff, and then obviously the, the natural senioritis of wanting to be at the next step, but wanting to make sure that we keep you sharp and things like that. So I would say that would be a really big challenge with coaching is trying to make sure that players stay in the moment and not wanting to jump to the next step too quickly until they're ready. What did you study to become a coach? So when I went to college, I went to the University of Cincinnati and I studied uh, business management um, and sports management and then a minor in marketing. So I had a little bit of stuff that involves marketing an entire club, but the coaching process is kind of like continuing education for any kind of professional, is you start with what is called your F license, which is the very basic, it's called the grassroots license now, which is basically just how to you know, run a basic session, how to get involved with kids, how to get them in and everything. And then you work your way up all the way. So you go your F, your D, your C, your B, your A. The A license is a year long full program where you travel all over the country. You have to do a lot of different stuff. Um, and it takes, you have to have at least a year in between. So it takes a, it's a pretty long process. Um, and then for me, I did some stuff with the English Federation. So that was international stuff. And then I also was part of the invite only US soccer academy director course, which was a year long where we spent time in Spain. We spent time all across the country, youth national team programming. So I would say the, the process of becoming a coach, if you want to go to the highest level, is probably a, almost an eight to 10 year process of learning. And a lot of it is trial and failure because you've got to figure out what you believe in as a coach of how you want to play and how you want to interact with players and what your best age group is, right? Because some coaches are really good with the little kids. Some are better with the older kids. So you have to kind of find what your best thing is and then learn, right? And perfect your craft. And how do you want to teach the game? And what do you like about it? And you know, that, that takes a long time to kind of finalize and figure out. But yeah, it's a, it's a long process. It seems like it would be a quick one, but it's, a, it's probably an eight to 10 and then you're always learning. So it's kind of a lifetime process. Poor 
coaching can be detrimental on both the coach and the mental health of the players, with 39 of 52 survey takers saying that they had a coach that made them lose their love for their sport or made them want to quit. If parents have to pull their kid from a certain team due to bad coaching, this means that their options of where they can participate are limited, therefore reducing their access to the sport. Have you ever had a coach that made you question your love for the sport or made you want to quit? Yes, I have. Have you ever had a coach that made you lose your, lose your love for your sport? <laughs> Yeah. Have you ever had a coach that made you lose your love for your sport? Yes. Have you ever had a coach that made you question your love for your sport? Yes. Have you ever had a coach that made you question your love for your sport or made you want to quit? Yes. Have you ever had a coach that made you question your love for your sport or made you want to quit? Yes. A solution? Coaching seminars or classes could be put in place to help improve the quality of coaching and their knowledge of the game. Stricter qualifications for coaching could also be put in place. In the survey, 40 of 52 people said that coaching programs or training would have a positive effect on the player's mental health. As stated, certain factors can make youth club sports difficult to participate in. However, the fact that mental health is often overlooked. Poor coaching can be detrimental, parents worry about the workload on their kids, and the process can be nerve-wracking for many. It's important to note the benefits of youth club sports participation and why it carries into everyday life. We know that physical activity has many physical benefits, as well as reducing the risk of certain blood conditions, including diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, and more. Additionally, there's strong evidence that sports participation has positive effects on personality development and physical well-being, including self-confidence, self-esteem, anxiety, depression, stress, self-concept, energy, mood, efficiency, and overall well-being. It's also important to note that this participation is beneficial to social development as well allowing kids to meet and communicate with other people, permitting exposure to diversity, to learn specific social skills such as collaboration skills and respect, how to be a part of a team, including cooperation skills, and how to manage your emotions in stressful situations. Would you say playing a club sport benefited your mental health in any way? Yes. Would you say playing a club sport helped in developing social skills? Yes. What skills? Um, leadership, accountability, and communication. Would you say playing a club sport benefited your mental health in any way? Yes. Would you say playing a club sport helped in developing social skills? Yes. What skills? Communication, leadership, and teamwork. According to the survey, 41 of 52 people showed that playing sports had a positive effect on their mental health, and 49 of 52 people said that sports helped with developing social skills. So with all that being said, what do you think would be the best solution to increase the accessibility of youth club sports? 